sleeping soul and it causes me to yearn and to hunger to reconnect to my holy father that put this breath into my body. Can you hang on to your seatbelts? My friend, I want you to know something. It's no strange thing to people that have gone through adoptions or, or that had never known their real mother or their real father. Amen. They, they, they can't explain it. The, psych, uh, the, the psychiatric evaluations, they can't really explain. But all they know is, is that something mentally in them causes them. They have to meet their birth mother. They have to meet their birth father. It causes, they just got to know. They, they could be a deadbeat, amen, but they don't care. They just got to meet them. They, they want to know where they came from. They want to know who it is because why? There's a DNA structure inside of them that's connected. Is that right? And we've read stories of how people have connected and, and, and how they came together, and, and it's nothing short of amazing, amen. It's that spiritual DNA structure that's in us when God gave us this soul and this breath, when we were born into this world under the design that God gave, my friend that causes us to say the same thing I need to know what this is outside of me I need to know what it is it's the reason you're sitting in this church today it's the reason that you've came here today it's because whether you deny it or whether you understand it or whether you refuse it or whether you accept it something inside of you says I need to find out what it is I need to connect to this preacher's telling you from the beginning it's the spirit of God that hovered and breathed into man. Can you shout? Hallelujah. I don't, I don't have time to get where I'm going, but I've gone a long way. Is that right? It's the Spirit of God. This is the manifestation of God's Spirit. It's the manifestation of His breath. The Holy Spirit, to me, I identify that with the breath of God. I said, well, how can you associate? And, and we'll get to that tonight. How's that? Same bat channel, same bat time? Yes, boy, Robin. <laughs> oh, I used that last week. I apologize. Stay tuned for further announcements from this station. <laughs> Somewhere along the message, I'm going to have Brother Louie come up and start giving announcements. <laughs> if you like this, you would like to get Scott Isham's latest book. <laughs> Send the money. <laughs> we, got, <laughs> we got you covered. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I give it to you free every Sunday. <laughs> That spirit, that spirit moved. It, it became life in the midst of darkness. That is the manifestation. This is the genesis, the beginning of the Spirit of God. When we talk about Holy Ghost, Jesus says, here's what it'll do. Acts begins to show you what it did. But then where did it start? It's all in the Godhead, the Trinity, the Godhead. You've got God the Father, God the Spirit is when God takes a piece of himself, the Holy Spirit, and he imparts that. It's still God. It's just been imparted and given to us. Jesus said, listen, only one of us at a time. In the Old Testament, the Father. In the New Testament, me. But after I'm gone, amen, he's going to send you the Holy Spirit. His breath is going to breathe again because the darkness is gripping the face of the earth. And God needs to breathe. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? But he, listen to what this preacher is trying to call out and challenge this church to do. We need to get hungry again for God to breathe in us. Is there darkness in the world? Casting a ballot in a voting box isn't going to get it done. My friend, we need supernatural. And that supernatural is to let the Veluach Elohim breathe into this old dark world again. Hallelujah. Yes, we need to do our duty in the ticket booth or voting station or whatever you want. We need to do our duty there, and I know we need to, but I want to tell you, don't get wrapped up so much in it that you have bypassed calling out on God and asking God to fill you with the power of the Spirit. God can do more with 12 men and one of them being a devil. 
to change the course of a society than you can with thousands at a voting booth. Give me somebody that's hungry to say, God, breathe on me again. Breathe in the church again. Breathe over the face of the earth again. Become alive in me again. Come on, somebody. I need it. Yes, I know what it'll do, but God, I need it to happen. I need it to happen. I need it to happen. Hallelujah, as they come to the music this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the, what is the Holy Spirit? Hebraic scripture. We'll continue this tonight. The Ruach uh, Elohim. It is, it is the breath of God. And, and we'll go through that tonight more in detail in carrying over from the old covenant into the new covenant of how that when God breathed, if you remember in the upper room, we say, well, why is it connected to wind in the upper room? The Bible said there came a sound of a mighty rushing wind. It wasn't just some kind of chance anomaly that happened in the weather patterns. God started breathing. <sighs> When I breathe, maybe all you say is, I need a cert. <laughs> Benny Hinn breathes, you might fall out because he had onions. I don't know. But I'll tell you something. When God breathes, <sighs> things will change, Sister Jenny. When God breathes, He lambo ho shitan do boho katatai. Solano do boho shilan do boho santai. Breathe, Holy Spirit. God, breathe. Darkness has taken its abode, but God just relaxed himself. Man created from dust but was lifeless, and God breathed. And he, could you imagine the moment? I'm closing, but could you imagine the moment here Adam is on God's operating table. Come here, Joe Jr. I'll lay you down on this table. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Give me somebody that's inanimate today to come up here, would you? No. <laughs> is there any sleepers in the house? <laughs> I'll wake you up. I had coffee this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine when God in his likeness and image and laid him up there. Nothing. Nothing. And that's exactly what we are without the Holy Spirit. That's what the church is. Just laying on an operating table. But it's time for the church to come out of surgery. I want to say that again and make the devil mad. I said it's time for the church to come out of surgery. No recovery needed. Because the great physician has come into the room and said, all right, I've got him in the shape I want him. I've got him situated the way I want him. But now he needs one more thing. He needs some life. <laughs> Could you imagine Adam when he... <laughs> He man felt that light breathe into his body. I believe that man jumped up and came out of that place and said, somebody touched me. Woo! Hallelujah. God, I pray, put your church back on the operating table again in the darkness of this world. And I'm asking, relax yourself. Breathe yourself. Exhale life. Give resuscitation. Amen. Revive the church of the living God. Amen. Give them life. We need it. We need it. Church don't need gimmickry. We don't need gimmickry. We don't need the fancy lights. We don't need the smoke machines. We need the real smoke. Amen. The Holy Spirit of God to fill the house, to fill the lives, to fill the individuals. Give me two or three that are agreed in his name and Jesus will be in the midst. Oh, hallelujah. I've got to shut up. 
Hallelujah. God, bring us out of surgery. Somewhere along the line, we become the valley of dead bones. Breathe, God. The Holy Spirit. It's an important topic in our personal piety because it's our life. Without it, we're dead. We need life. It's every... Every head bow and eye closed for just a moment this morning. You may feel, you, you may say, Preacher, I'm not, I, I'm understanding some of the things you're saying, but maybe I don't quite understand other things, but I can feel something in me that's challenging me and calling to me and beckoning me. I, I, I identify with what you're saying, that there's something in us that is yearning to connect. And I'm not sure what to do. What do you want me to do? It's not what I want to do, but what God wants to do. And the solution today for you is to say, God, you don't have to understand all the, all the ins and outs of God. All you need is to say, I surrender, God. Everything I am, here I am. I open to you. Breathe life back into me. And if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ, this is the perfect time to come to this altar and say, Lord, breathe life back into me. Put me back together, God. I feel like the world has crumbled me in pieces, but God put me back together. Would you come? Would you come? Maybe there's those that are dedicated their lives to Christ. Amen. Listen, we are not so far removed this morning that we, none of us here today, including myself, are so far out that we're so close to God that we don't need to come pray this morning and ask God's Holy Spirit to breathe back in us again. Matter of fact, this is the source of revival for us this morning. I want to ask you, I beckon and call to you, do you have a hunger for God to breathe into your life? Do you have a hunger for the Holy Spirit to breathe in a darkness of the world that we're in? God's looking for a man that he can breathe and a woman and a child and a young person and a teenager that he can breathe his breath to work his mighty works. Why don't you come? Why don't you come this morning? One and all, everyone that will. God, I'm hungry. Just breathe. Breathe into me, oh God, again. Breathe life back into me.